Kai McPherson here of Nature Bats Last, which you can find at kaimcpherson.com. Type those letters into your URL, it'll take you to Nature Bats Last. You might want to go there on the date this video is released so that you can see the context I provide regarding this short video. I'm going to talk about a few papers, and some of these papers, if you click the links, lead to other papers as well. The topic today is ocean deoxygenation, and it's one of the most pernicious yet underreported side effects of human induced climate change. Primary causes of deoxygenation are eutrophication, which simply means increased nutrient runoff from land and sewage, and nitrogen deposition from the burning of fossil fuels. Add to those two factors a warming body of water naturally holds less oxygen than a colder body of water. This all according to the International Union for Conservation of Nature, a reliable source that is providing, in this case, reliable information. A paper from Nature, published July 29, 2010, by Boyce and colleagues, entitled Global Phytoplankton Decline Over the Past Century. In this paper, they estimated global phytoplankton biomass at various scales since 1899, and they observed declines, an estimated global rate of decline of about 1% per year, down 40% since 1950. So phytoplankton loss is a direct outcome of a deoxygenated ocean. Indeed, the press release for that paper indicates by a headline, researchers find ocean plankton species are not adapting to climate change and could disappear altogether. A peer-reviewed paper in Global Change Biology from 2013 titled Multidecadal Range Changes versus Thermal Adaptation for Northeast Atlantic Oceanic Copepods in the Face of Climate Change, published October 18, 2013, finds that thermal adaptation has not mitigated the impacts of global warming for dramatic range changes of key species. This points to continued dramatic climate-induced changes in the biology of the oceans. Thermal adaptation has not mitigated the impacts of ocean warming. What that means is this phytoplankton species just can't keep up. Bottom line, as reported by a paper from Stanford University referring to a peer-reviewed journal article entitled A Bad Time to Be Alive, Study Links Ocean Deoxygenation to Ancient Die-Off. The ancient die-off in particular was the mass extinction event known as the Late Ordovician Mass Extinction Event. So this popular paper published April 14, 2020 refers to a paper published the same day, April 14, 2020, in the peer-reviewed journal Nature Communications, indicating that the late Ordovician mass extinction event resulted in large part from ocean deoxygenation, which caused the die-off of a tremendous number of the species in what was called a second wave of that mass extinction event.